Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. We got the Wingsland S6 4K little selfie drone, little portable selfie drone. Very similar. I don't know if you remember me reviewing the ZeroTech Dobby. Um, so it's going to be in direct competition with something like this. And also perhaps the DJI Spark. So they're all about the same size. Of course, the Spark does not fold down quite as compact. What we're gonna do today is we're going to unbox, inspect this, set it up. If I have enough time in this video and it doesn't run too long, I'll also include the flight test. So let's get into the Wingsland S6 4K portable selfie drone and get started. So just looking at the box here, um, this is like just a cardboard box, nothing too flashy. It's just got some logo, a picture of the drone on it. Looks like this is going to be the orange version because it's got this little orange tab indicating the color. I think they have a green and also a black version. Nothing too cool to look at on the box, so we'll just go ahead and unbox it and see what we get inside. The cool thing about this drone is you can put on these peripherals and activate them remotely. This is called the Wingsland Boom Boom. It's just like a little toy gun that you mount on the top and you can remotely shoot these little pellets. So that's gonna be really fun. We're gonna have some fun with that. And then the other thing is this super bright um, LED light you can also mount on top. So it's kind of a modular system where you can pull off one and mount the other on top and remotely activate them from the app from your phone. I don't think this, this thing does not have a controller, so you're gonna be controlling it from your cell phone or tablet. Anyway, here's the box. Looks very similar. The motors do look very similar to the Dobby. Hopefully better. And we have some camera specs here. Here's what the box looks like. Just rotating it around. One thing I'd have to say is, this is like super quality packaging. I, I could compare this to something like Apple packaging. It's got this tab here, this orange tab, it's magnetic. You can see how that's really nicely packed and the whole thing just folds up, really well done. Um, nice thick cardboard, it feels really quality in the hand here. We've got some Wingsland logo there and then we have some more, a picture of it with some safety information when we first open it up. We've got a nice greeting uh, letter to the user here for the drone itself. And um, it says, dear customer, thank you. It's got all this support information. And it's got these QR codes for videos on upgrading the camera and calibrating the gyro. So if you need to watch those videos, just use it with a QR scanner on your phone or tablet. And check this out, wow. It comes in its own little clear case. That's really cool. Really liking that. We'll get to that in just a sec. Just wanna see everything that comes in the box. So we have a second tier here and we have an instruction manual with a couple other pamphlets. Looks like different languages. You get a battery. You get these extra propellers. So kind of cool, a whole set of extra propellers. Here's the charger for the battery. And here's the plug for said charger, little micro USB plug. So this thing's really interesting. It's got um, wings lined on there and then it's got a little hole so you can like clip it onto a chain or something. And just at first look, it's like, what the heck is this thing? But you can actually pull it apart. Let's see if I can zoom in there. It's a little screw cap. And look at that. It's a mini little Allen hex wrench. So for everything you need to do on the drone, they do give you the hex wrench included. And this just screams quality for some reason. It's amazing to me how they include that. It's one of those flat micro USB cables, nicely done. Anyway, so that's everything in the box. Just opening this up and look at that. So really nicely done. The quality is just screaming quality, everything about this thing. Uh, the fit and finish is super nice. Very well molded little case here. So you can carry it around and protect it. And here it is, the Wingsland S6. Very similar to the Dobby. The Dobby is actually a little bit smaller. You see how the, there's a comparison there. But it's also thicker that way. So the Wingsland is thinner from top to bottom and wider from left to right. And just about the same length. Maybe a little bit longer than the Dobby by maybe a quarter inch. I'm just gonna pull these arms out real quick. So they pull out 
with some tension and then they lock all four of them and you can see how the propellers are just loose there so they're gonna when this spins up they're just gonna open up with inertia and give this thing some lift and then also if you hit something they won't break off and hurt anything they'll just collapse down so really cool there's the camera there and we have some information on the camera kind of like what I read on the box gives you the information so we'll see how that camera looks in the flight test looks like it has a little light there everything else on the front is just cosmetic design so this is where it really intrigues me they they have this really cool kind of like sports car design with this really nice orange this orange is just like they chose to use a really nice orange on this for some reason I'm really liking it there's some venting there in the sides so both sides has that venting flipping it over to the bottom check this out so we have an optical flow camera and two sonic sensors very similar to something like the Dobby as well you can see the bottom of the Dobby had one sonic sensor and an optical flow camera on the bottom of that one more venting here on both ends and then this looks like it's going to be the button to power up now this one has GPS remember so this is going to give you GPS lock and it looks like probably the GPS is in this top portion here let's go ahead and take off this protective coating and see what this is so just more labeling Wingsland S6 there when we take off that but I'm assuming that's where the GPS is it looks like that's a little GPS hump and by the looks of it, yes it is. A little shielding on the bottom. So real cool brushless motors here. I'm not sure what the KV is on these motors or the specs, so go ahead and check the link in the description um, to see the specs on this guy. There's the battery compartment there. Speaking of the battery, let's go ahead and check out what they give us and plug it in and see how that all works. Okay, so I got two of these. One comes with the package and they sent me one extra. Uh, it's a 1400 milliamp hour, 7.6 volt. So it's like a high voltage 2s and the battery has this little up sign on it with an arrow so it's going to go in just like this and we're just going to slide it in push it till it snaps in and locks and that should be good to go so it's still very very light in comparison with the dobby the dobby actually feels a little bit heavier than this for some reason maybe about the same that gets us to where do we connect the little add-on things and it looks like it's going to connect somewhere up here so let's go ahead and open some of those boxes up and just see how these things are all going to work really anxious on this gun so let's see how this gun is going to mount up this would be really neat if you're flying around fpv you know these are just little foam darts so don't be scared about this. It's not going to hurt anybody. They're even softer than regular airsoft pellets. So it looks like we get a bag of pellets. It looks like maybe around 15, 20 pellets in there. And then this looks like another connecting device. We'll have to see what that does. And here's the gun itself. So this is cool. So it looks like we're going to load it. This might be the loader. And here's the gun. Man, they really spent a lot of time in design and fit and finish on these things really high quality but anyway wow there we go so these are pins they're spring-loaded pins I'm pushing these down with my fingers and they're popping back up it looks like there's the clip or a cart cartridge and that's where we're gonna load it up with this loader they give us very cool and this thing's already packed with BBs so here they are one just fell out they feel like hollow little plastic guys semi hollow uh, like just enlarged airsofts They're very they're not very heavy. They're very light so it doesn't seem like you're gonna hurt anybody But it looks like this is how we're gonna load it up. I'm just gonna put this on here and I'm not even reading the directions, but it looks like it's so easy Let's just do it That's it. So of course, you know, I should be reading the directions, but this looks like it's pretty self-explanatory just slide this thing over here and that kind of just locks in nice and tight and then it easily looks just like this is a clip to go over the sides and all you're doing is making sure that those pins are sitting down in there and then clipping that thing right over so that just snapped on and look at that we have a, a little mini drone with a airsoft shooting gun this is going to be super fun i can't wait to try this out cool so in the flight test we're definitely going to test that maybe i'll shoot it a couple times here on the table in preparation last thing in the box here i just want to open this one up now this is like a little searchlight 
that looks like it's going to go on the same connection. So you have to take off each peripheral. And check this thing out. This is neat. It's like a little flashlight. A little high powered LED flashlight. Same kind of pins on the bottom. And another clip. Same exact clip. So if you lose one and you have two things, at least you can use the same clip. Let's see how this looks like when we put it on. So again, very simple. Whoops. Okay, so all my BBs just fell out. So it looks like maybe you may have to figure out if there's a cap or perhaps not. Perhaps they just sit in there and there is no cap. I didn't see you really see a cap. But this thing just pops off just the opposite way you put it on. Just grab the edge here and it easily pops off. There's a little lip here on the very edge where they both grip onto. So same way, we're just putting it face down and it snaps in there perfectly, right in there. Very neat. I love this kind of stuff. And check it out, so we have a little searchlight there. That's way cool. It looks like a super bright LED. And this is not like a little toy drone. This is a high quality GPS, you know, drone. So that's really cool. I'm really liking that. And it looks like you can activate these things within the app because there are no switches or anything on the device itself. Okay guys, so let's see how this goes. I downloaded the Wingsland Fly app from the App Store, Android or um, Apple, whichever kind of device you have. And I got the batteries charged up, so let's plug this guy in and see what it looks like and how it boots up. This is gonna be the first time I'm doing this, so doing this for the first time with you guys. So we're plugging in the battery and then we're just holding down the power button. I hear the van come up and I'm seeing some orange lights on the back and some beeps. So we'll just let it do its thing. There we go, now I'm seeing the right rear tail light blink and now they're both blinking. Looks like that's the ESC checking. Okay, cool, so they're both blinking, that should be it. And that fan is pretty loud, so it is pumping some air through there. And it's got a pretty cool look, look at this. It looks like a sports car drone almost. Very futuristic little vehicle there with those lights. We're gonna go into our Wi-Fi here and see if we can find the uh, Wingsland. There it is. So you see that there, so it says Wingsland S6 Air and we got some numbers, so I'm gonna press on that and we want to punch in a password, W-I-N-G-S-L-A-N-D, and connect. Let's see if we get a connection, obtaining IP address, and we are connected, yay. Great, Wingsland Fly app, and launch it. So there we go, and look at this app, really nice picture in the background they have there. And there it looks like a disclaimer, statement of first time use, Okay, fly safety notice, battery you should safety notice, so make sure you read through all this stuff. Another product safety notice, enter. Uh, I guess you gotta go down and press agree there at the bottom. Enter. Notification, when working temperature is low, the performance of battery will be affected. Okay, yes. Cool, so there's the app. So we got this little thing sliding over on the top with some pictures, and here we are. So it has a simulator, and also has a start to fly go. So I'm gonna press go here, and there we go, cool. So it kinda goes over what to do. I already got the ex arms extended. That's step one. Tear off the lens protector, I already did that. I didn't even see a lens protector on mine. And, oh yeah, the micro US micro SD card I actually forgot to mention in the beginning is right on the side here so I totally missed that in the unbox but if you look here there's a micro USB port and also that's where you're gonna put your micro SD card for onboard video recording so we got the orange lights in the back and I didn't even see on the front we got these two nice green lights on either side also okay so it looks like the card can go up to 32 gigabyte for that micro SD card. So it's telling you even how to do the battery and everything and so it's basically going through everything I just did and now this is showing us kind of the user interface. So we're gonna have to do the compass calibration when we're out flying. 
Definitely do that away from any metal. Don't do it in your house. And it looks like it has an on-screen guide when you do that also. So it is really great that they're giving you this little initial start tutorial. Really liking this. Cool, and then it has some support information and all that. So we're gonna start to fly. And there we go, so this is the onboard user interface. General settings, accessories, photo editor, auto return home. So it's basically a legend in telling you what all these buttons do. Okay, sliding to the right. Okay, so we got GPS satellites, Wi-Fi signal, battery level, selfie mode, connection status, propeller guard status, all kinds of stuff, radar, auto takeoff and landing, and flight data down below. So we do have telemetry coming in, great. All right, confirm propeller guard. I'm gonna do it without, right? Wow, so there we go. So there's our camera and our interface. Let's see what the latency is real quick. There's a little bit of latency there and that's normal for Wi-Fi. Interestingly, it does seem like it has some software stabilization. Look at this. So it's got some kind of built-in uh, roll stabilization. You see how it's really smoothing that roll out? Not so much the pitch, but the roll is doing really good with the stabilization, so that's pretty cool. And all the stuff it talked about in the legend is up here. We already have 12 satellites on top, so that's promising. This has a dual GPS and GLONASS GPS antenna, so we're gonna pick up satellites very good. We have our Wi-Fi signal, our battery power on the drone, like that legend showed, connected. Let's go into settings, see what we get. All right, so it's in beginner mode right now. Stuff is locked in beginner mode, so we could take that off. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off for our flight test. Yes, that's great. At least you can switch even without flying. Selfie mode, okay, so it basically reverses your control in selfie mode. You can turn that on if you want, so the camera's facing you and pressing out. It'll go backwards. Clicking on the next one, flight control settings, flight speed, cool. So we have different rates of flight, low, medium, high. You know what I'm gonna do is turn this all the way up and we can adjust how we want when we get out there. Okay, next one, compass. So click to calibrate. We'll do the calibrate in the grass in the park. Don't wanna do that here because there's too much metal in the house. Joystick type, mode two, default. You can also calibrate the controller if you need to. It's flying kind of weird. Motion sensitive. This is the one where if you press and hold the screen, you can control it by motion of the phone. So it's using the accelerometer. We'll try that also in the flight test. Cool. So we want to keep it on uh, mode two for now. And uh, I want to go back into the settings and make sure we didn't miss anything. And the last thing is down here on the bottom. Can't go any further down. Cool. So it's just telling you what you're connected to. And you can, I guess you can change the password if you wanted to right there. So I'm gonna press X out of here and we're back to our interface. So pretty cool guys. This looks like it's promising craft here. What I'm not seeing is really any, let me see what this back arrow does. Ah, that's what I was wondering. It does have follow me and point of interest. Very good. Bomb bomb. Oh, okay, here are the devices. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, so you got those three devices. I got two of them. I don't have the emoji display. Whichever one you have enabled, you click on it, and look at that. That's the trigger to fire. If I have the searchlight on, you got all the settings. Wow, you can do strobe lights, brightness settings, solid lighting mode. Very good. You got some options here. This is new and different. I've never seen this before. And of course you have the emoji display, which I don't have. It's just like basically an LED little panel that displays different faces and stuff on the panel. So very cool. It looks very easy to control, very simple. And you've got all the information right here. So really anxious to fly this guys. Uh, this is gonna be great. So let me power this off, charge everything back up, get out there and do our flight test. I'll film everything. I'll have video of it up on the screen. I'll have line of sight video and everything. We got two batteries to fly it with. So we're gonna go through everything on this one and have some fun. Let's go fly. All right guys, we're here with the Wingslin XS6, little portable selfie GPS drone. And we're at the park and we have two batteries and my phone. So we're gonna do a thorough flight test. I wanted to show you, it is a little windy today. So I'm starting up my wind speed gauge here, anemometer, 
and I just did a flight test with the Wakara Vitus and it was pretty windy that thing it was able to handle it but it's like gusting up to like 10 between 5 and 10 sometimes a little bit more hopefully you can see that on the screen it's coming from that direction from these directions kind of variable but we'll see how this little thing does not the ideal conditions but you know conditions aren't always ideal this is this is touted as a portable little selfie drone and if you're traveling you may only have a windy day like this and need to use it so okay so let's start from scratch here and just see how long it takes to set it up um, if you're out and you reach your location and you want to take some shots so of course taking it out of the case extending the arms is pretty simple one two three four just make sure they're all the way out because you can accidentally extend them partially pop it in the battery until it clicks in nice and tight and I'm gonna put it just like this I think I do have an SD card in there yeah so I got my SD card in I'm gonna put it right on this H so we'll see how the return to home is for sure and I want to power up so the little power buttons right in the bottom we're pressing and holding it for a few seconds I'm hearing the fan boot up and I'm just gonna leave it there in the meantime, I'm gonna start up my phone and get my phone all connected. Turning on our Wi-Fi, and we wanna make sure it is connecting to the S6. And yes, it is, so it auto-connected because I connected to it previously, and we're away from my home Wi-Fi, so it's gonna to try to auto-connect there. Looks like that's all good. And so now all we need to do is launch the S6 app. Boom, so Wingsland S6. That thing's just sitting there acquiring satellites, hopefully. So we're just going through this again. And we're just gonna go, go. Cool, so we're ready to go. Looks like we have 16 satellites already, that's great. But you know what, we didn't do a compass cal, so I definitely wanna do that first. Okay, click to calibrate, there we go. So yes to start calibration. All right, so clockwise rotation, I'm looking at the screen and I'm doing a rotation here on the drone, but just like it's showing. Okay, successful. So that's all you gotta do, wow. You don't have to do any nose down or anything. Okay, so it's just the horizontal calibration. And that's it. And it looks like the camera is fixed at a little bit of a pointing down position. So let's take off. We have 100% power and we got two batteries, so let's do it. I'm pressing take off. And all I need to do is press my finger on this little icon, I guess, one time. Propellers spin up, and it launches to, it's like 2.6 meters. So right around 10 feet. Great. So that's what you can expect. A little bit of wander in the wind. Whoa, it's coming down on its own there. And you know what I want to do is, let's take a photo real quick, boom. I just press the photo button. Photo saved. I'm gonna click on video. And I'm gonna click, it's to the left of the screen here. I'm gonna click record. Okay, so it's recording video. That should be in 1080, I believe. Holy smokes, it's going up and down like crazy. Not sure what it's doing. You see that? It must be using the barometer or something. Let me get a little closer to the ground. You'll be able to see this con the controls on the screen come up. So I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe the opticals um, and sonic sensors aren't working that great in the grass here. Let's try to get back over this launch pad. Let's see if that's a little bit better. Let's see if it can hold its position. I kind of want to get an eye level so I can do like a walk around with you guys. But that looks like it might be a little difficult in the wind with this one. See how it's fluctuating on its own like that? Up and down, up and down. A little higher up. Okay. Anyway, let's just do a quick little walk around. Hopefully it doesn't run into me. <laughs> so you can see the camera is pointed down. So you, let's see how it is at eye level. So if I pick it up to eye level, it's just barely getting my face so you're gonna have want to have it a little above your face hey guys thanks for tuning into the channel and it's doing this on its own it's going up and down don't really like that it's moving around and going up and down of course keep in mind that the wind you know 
But if you're on a vacation, like I was saying, you might have this kind of wind and you might want to use this. So a little bit of a con there in the wind wants to go up and down. So it's moving around a bit, like around five feet. When the wind comes up, it really starts to go up and down. You see that breeze. Anyway, enough of that. Let's see what our yaw rate is. So come down a little bit. And I have full yaw to the right. And that's our full yaw speed. Okay. I'm going to let off. A little bit precarious, up and down and shaking around. Full um, roll to the left and right. See how fast it is. Full roll to the left. And you'll see the speed up on the screen there. Full roll to the right. Horizontal speed. So into the wind, it's really fighting the wind. But we do have our telemetry up there on the bottom. Let's try like a punch test and stuff. So we'll bring it down a little lower full throttle down here and let's do a punch up so from down towards the ground do I have full throttle down it's not coming down really full throttle down there we go come on full throttle down full throttle down can you come any closer there we go all right full punch up now that's our full punch speed and vertical speed about one meter per second it looks like let's go ahead and get way up there and do some video and pictures okay so I'm 30 I guess that's 30 meters I think I don't think that's 30 feet and let's see what the wind what it does in the wind you can see how the picture is pretty choppy I'll have the video up there so not ideal for windy conditions and then it's trying to lean and fight the wind so the picture is a little bit skewed just because it's leaning the whole craft. Flight battery is low, 20%, okay? So we're going to have to save the um, smart functions for the next battery. Cool, well that's basically it. Let's take some pictures up here, so I'm going to stop recording. And let's go into camera and take some shots. It's really getting blown around with the wind up there. So not ideal for wind guys at all. Looks like it's coming down already on its own. So it's gonna land at 20%. Can I push up? Nope, get away from the box. <laughs> Try to get over to the, oh, okay. So 20%, that thing's gonna land no matter what and you can't push up, you can move it around but you cannot um, force it up no matter what. Cool, so you know what? That was a decent little flight. Let's see how long we we're flying for. Does it even say? I guess not. I'll have that, those numbers up though on the screen here just to let you guys know how that first flight went. Let me pop in the second battery and um, try some of those smart functions. Okay guys, we're back at it. I got the new battery in there. Let's give it a round two with some of these smart functions. And we got 17 satellites, so we should be fine. Take off. So it locks the satellites really quick. And the cool thing about this is it has regular GPS and GLONASS satellites. So supposedly it has a really good GPS lock. And this one I wanted to test the return to home. So man, yeah, with the wind, it just is all over the place, up and down. Must just be using the barometer or something for its height. I don't even know why it has a sonic sensor. Look at that. Just up and down like crazy. And wind will do that to some barometers. So it looks like that's the problem with this one. Anyway, quickly, quickly, before we die, I wanna turn this way, face us. And I think it's gonna use the GPS on here to follow, <laughs> if it can, because it's just all over the place. So we're pressing, whoa. Get up, get up. And the wind is really pushing it down. What the heck's going on? Stay up, please. Go up higher so it has a buffer zone. Okay, so I'm gonna walk back because you can't tilt the camera. So I'm kind of in screen. And I'm gonna open up the side view here and let's try follow me. So I'm checking on it. Please manually control aircraft to avoid possible obstacles. Take mobile device with app as a hotspot. Okay, yes. 
Position successful. Yes. Whoa, where the heck? So just turn that way. Turn to the right. Okay, now follow me. So... All right, so it's following me, but the the camera's not pointed at me. But if I walk in front of the camera, what happens? See how I'm there on the very bottom left of the screen? So it's not doing very good at a follow me. Let's see if I yaw, if it'll... No, it's yawing back. So it thinks I'm over there for some reason. I'm trying to yaw it manually to get me in view and then watch it. It yaws back to the right. That's pretty stupid. Pardon my French. Let's exit. Aircraft will hover, yes. And let's go into uh, point of interest. So POI, boom. Okay. Fly around the current position. I'm going to press OK. Now let's see what it does. Man, it's really going up and down like crazy. Look at that. It's fluctuating like 10 or more feet. Anyway, should I be pushing to the right? Wow, it's really fluctuating. I'm just pushing to the right. Let's see. No, it's just regularly going right. Oh, there we go. So I think I had, you have to pull back or pitch back to get your distance away from the center point where it's at and then once you let go of the right stick it'll start doing its circle so let's try to get in the circle so if you if you want that to work you need to put it right over your head um, I'm trying to get in the circle let's stop it and try that again Okay, so it's just gonna hover. Okay, so I'm gonna get right under it, which is kind of scary because of its fluctuation. Look at that. Again, might just be because of the wind. So I'm gonna pick it up pretty high, get right under it. Hope it doesn't fall on my head while I do this and do point of interest. It's moving around. <laughs> Fight the wind, dude. Okay, yes. Yes, start. Okay, so I'm gonna pull back. Okay, I wanna get way back there. So I'm in shot. Boom, letting go. Let's see if it does it. Now it's starting its point of interest. Ooh, I forgot to start recording. Record video, please don't mess up the point of interest. Okay, cool. Recording video, doing a point of interest. I am over to the right of the screen. I'm going to walk into the center. It's just point of interesting whatever you set below it. So it's doing okay, but you see the wind is now pushing the nose up because it's pushing from its back. You'll see when it is facing into the wind, it'll start pointing down. Flight battery's low, man. Shucks. May not be able to do uh, a boom boom test on this one. <laughs> you know what I'll do is I'll cut in and oh let's do um wait stop stop I wanted to do a return to home exit 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 return to home pressing it go return to home return to home okay good will it do it with 20% power left come on do it let's see how close okay good that was close, man. Usually lands at 20, but it let me go into return to home. And let's just see where it lands, guys. Okay, it started its descent. What's it gonna do? That's not bad, actually. If it turns off, good. Okay, cool. Stop the video. It looks like I'm gonna need to get some video of me shooting that um, little gun on top and also the, the little uh, LED light. I'll just put a clip in that for the house right now.
Did it hit you? Is it sore? <laughs> oh, I got you in the shoulder. Is that break in? <laughs> the blinding you? Okay, cool. So I've had that video up there in the house where you can see how the gun works, the LED light works that I got. And they also have an emoji screen where you can program the face, I guess, and show the different uh, face gestures. Um, but still kind of cool for peripherals. That's kind of a neat way to do it, how they click on the top and they're just connected through these pins on this little pad. I do think that's a very um, inventive idea and pretty cool. So let's go through a little pros and cons with the Wingsland S6. Um, you did see how it was very susceptible to wind, um, just crazy fluctuation. And it didn't even seem like the sonic or optical flow sensor was really working. Maybe it's using that optical flow to help it land. Um, it was only like a couple feet off from the landing pad, so that's definitely very acceptable in a GPS craft. I can't say enough about the looks of this thing. It just looks like a flying sports car. The fit and finish, the tolerances are all top-notch. It just looks great. 
So their development in design really is going to take this thing a long ways. It looks like they might need a little bit more work on some of the advanced functions and the altitude hold was way off. You can see how it was really influenced by the wind. So again, not even sure if these sensors are even really working on the bottom or it's just having trouble in the grass. I'll have had the flight time up on the screen. Uh, I think it does log your flights and your flight time in the app. So I'll have uh, the average flight time pop up for you guys so you can see what that's all about. It does fold down really nice. You can see how it's folding down. And so once you quickly fold this down, it's definitely pocketable. Uh, when you put it in this case here, it gets a little bigger. So I'd recommend if you're gonna slide this in your pocket, just don't even use the case, just slide it in just like this. And yeah, you might have to have like kind of baggy pockets, but it still will fit in there. Also, I've had the videos and pictures it was taking from this camera on screen for you to see, so you can judge for yourself how good those were. The GPS lock was good enough. I mean, the wind, you know, not an ideal conditions to do a flight test with a small object, a small craft like this rather. At least it gives you an idea of how it did in the wind and also how good the GPS. The GPS lock laterally, horizontally was good. It's just that I can't get over how crazy that fluctuation in um, altitude was. The speed's kind of slow, even at the maximum speed setting. It was pretty, very slow yaw, and I think that's just because, you know, it doesn't have any camera stabilization, so they wanted to give you the best, smoothest video possible. It got going decently fast, and usually these guys, I didn't test the range, but um, usually for a Wi-Fi signal like this connected to your phone, you're only gonna get about 300 feet maximum. And it seemed like I went pretty high and it was still in good connection. So I'd imagine this would get definitely get that amount of um, range. So let's talk about some of the smart functions we tried. Uh, I did try the follow me and the circle around point. And the follow me did not work. I, I swear I was doing it right. But you could see I was standing over there. I went into the follow me while the camera was pointing directly at me from the craft. And as soon as I push the follow me the craft turned this way and kind of went over here a little bit so I was completely out of the picture when I started walking this way it would kind of keep its distance but I was still out of the picture and when I tried to manually yaw it to, f to face me and let go it would yaw back to where possibly it thought my point was and it is using the GPS that it thinks the cell phone's at. So perhaps this GPS isn't that great in my cell phone. That could be one of the problems. Maybe some people had better luck with a different cell phone. This is the LG G6. So it could have been a little unprecise on my cell phone and that's normal. So I'm not gonna knock it too much for that because it could have just been that problem with, with this. The circle around point or point of interest actually worked decently well. Um, if you do it right and that requires you to go directly under it get it the height you want and then hit that point of interest uh, pull back you know we didn't actually try the accelerometer function anyway you just pull back on the right stick how wide you want the circle to be and then it will just start when you let go it starts to do its point of interest and I'd imagine that would have worked pretty well if it wasn't so windy today you could see how it, camera was tilting up because it was trying to fight the wind that was coming from this direction and then when it got on this side of me where the wind was coming at the front it started to point down and you could see me a little better in the picture um, so that worked okay I'd imagine again much better in calm circumstances but that's gonna kind of wrap it up I just the major selling factor for this thing is it's small it's got GPS it looks like it's got a decent camera and it looks incredibly awesome I just love the look of it. I can't get over the look. And I think they have a few colors, black, green, and uh, orange like this, maybe blue or something, carbon fiber, I think they also possibly might have. So pretty cool, cool little device. Um, again, guys, I will have the links down in the description down below of where you can buy this little guy and also check out more of the specs and if you want to check out the in-depth specs on it. But I hope you enjoyed that little review of the Wingsland S6. I may do a little bit more with it maybe take it out on a super calm day so stay tuned hang in there you may see some more from the wingsland uh, s6 a little smart quad anyway guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one